Rewind the dynamite from the post wrestling site. AEW, lighting up the fuse. Sit back and enjoy the bubbly. As we hear from John and Waiting. Where we're going, we don't need roads. And if the bug stops here, this thing might blow. Everything you hear, opinions of the show. And if you don't like it, go to the forums and let them know. Hello, everybody. We are live. It's John Pollock. Wei Ting, coming at you here on Rewind to Dynamite. How are you, Wei? Uh, I feel chilly because winter has arrived. It's very cold in this room, I'm, I'll be honest. I have a heater in this room, but for the sake of our pristine audio, I, I turn it off and I, I suffer for everybody, for, for, for their ears. Thank you for your sacrifice. I appreciate it. I am not kidding. I think I've asked you how you're doing today like four, five times. Yeah, we've done a lot of recording. I mean, not just, you know, for stuff that you hear, but stuff for this that you won't hear for a few days at least. Or um, years, maybe. Maybe we're doing something even bigger than people are assuming. Oh, wouldn't that be a, a project? Uh, the legacy project. Record like a little bit, like a day for like 30 yeah. years and then release it. Imagine if we did a, a one minute conversation every day forever and then... We had like thousands of one minute exchanges all put together. That would be insane. Yeah. That'd be such a waste of time. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking like we're Dude, I'm teasing. so tired. I'm so tired. Oh God, dude. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, I was in the middle of a nap when I, I completely, I totally forgot one of our recordings. Our I, I, recordings. I woke up. I have. I woke up <laughs> way today, and I felt like crap because uh, uh, no, it was I, that sound. I felt so bad. It was like you were you were in a coma when I called you. Oh, I feel terrible because like I'm. I usually. I I feel like I've been on a pretty good run of like not missing any of our scheduled things, and this was one where I was just like, I like. Oh, I have an, like an hour before Dynamite. I'm going to try to catch a quick nap because there's no way I'm going to survive this show. Legit, and the only other time in the post-wrestling era that I can remember you forgetting something was that time right before we launched and we had a, an appointment at the at a bank. Oh, do remember, yes. Do you remember yes. this? I do remember that, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that. Anyway. But that's so- it. That, that's, like, that's like it. <laughs> Yeah, so so I mean, I guess it just you know we we have a lot of things kind of you know juggling. So apologies, but I I mean I thought I, you know this show was was definitely an energizing show. This was one of the best shows of the year. I thought this two hour program was incredible, and I know everything is going to be focused on the first hour. I thought the second hour was pretty damn great too. I thought this was just a outstanding episode. I don't know if I'll declare it uh, the best episode of the year out of dynamite uh but at worst this is a contender at worst for sure yeah i mean a lot of people writing their best of lists um thinking that you know the the selection process was already over i mean here comes i i think it's a reminder every year to wait for at least the winter is coming if not um what else is to come you know for the for the for the last couple weeks of this year they should do this for all the seasons uh Oh, spring is coming. Summer is coming. <laughs> Fall is coming. Uh, Sixty-minute draw. These should be their quarterly specials. The I don't need <laughs> Battle of the Belts. I want. I yeah. want. I want like the seasonal change to be reflected in my wrestling. Yeah. How else are we gonna know? You know what? Uh, what season it's supposed to be outside? Yes. Okay. Great idea. Yeah. So. Now, now the build begins for uh, spring. I think. I think uh, AEW should try to negotiate a deal for the Weather Channel. They should make a weather a weather channel championship. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, tonight the temperature was very heated in Texas. It was a hot crowd in Garland. This crowd was amazing. This crowd was uh, unbelievable. Well, especially for the first match. I mean, I I do feel like there was a dip afterwards, and understandably so. You know, very rarely, I would say, in wrestling history, has there been like a one-hour Iron Man match for the World Championship that preceded um, a few other matches. So everybody who had to follow that definitely had their work cut out for them. I thought they were pretty great for the main event. Like they were, they were pretty up for for that. But uh, we will get into all of that. Uh, we did put out a post daily news update earlier today, so you can go find that youtube.com slash post wrestling, where we go through the Kevin Owens news of his resigning, 
uh, Raw numbers, NXT from Tuesday night, and a lot of information, news coming out of the New Japan show earlier today, uh, which I'll also alert everyone, the great Mark Buckledy has a Mark Buckledy review of Wednesday show. It is uh, live on the site now, so if you want to get his analysis on the entire show, including a pretty great main event involving Hiromu Takahashi and Yo, you can go check that out uh, now. And Thursday, let's uh, get the plugs out now. We are going to have a post-daily news update at 1, then at 3 o'clock, waiting with the wellness policy with Jordan Goodman as they put a bow on 2021, and then Thursday night, WH Park will be joined by Karen Peterson. Maybe a cameo from Zelda will make uh, their way onto the show. Shout out to Zelda. Yeah. Yes. She, yes. The As you dubbed <laughs> Zelda the first non-human in the Post family. Uh, they will be chatting about <laughs> Hawkeye, episode five of six, which wraps up next week. Yeah, John, care to tell the... No, for- <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. I just want for the record to be stated, I was the one who was asked what they thought of Succession. I did not bring up anything, but Jesus Christ, you would think (laughs) that I ruined Christmas for everybody. I'm just going to shut up and I'm not going to talk about anything because my God. I we can. will we will leave the conversation, of course, to to uh, WH and Karen. I'm very excited to hear their thoughts because episode five of Hawkeye was a lot of fun. Uh, but I will be missing the show because I'll be watching Spider Man No Way Home. So I've 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 unfollowed all my social media. I muted all the words. Uh, so hopefully I could stay spoiler free until tomorrow. Is there is there any way like who could see it by now? Who could like spoil? I believe it? it's already out in the UK. Oh, and, and, and there have been uh, preview screenings on, since Monday. Sure. so critics right. reviews are out. Yeah. I am uh, I am really happy for you that this is happening now. I, I'm very nervous about all the, uh, especially in the province of Ontario. Like my wife just found out tonight, um, she cannot go back to work in January. She will be working from home all of January. Wow. So um, it's it's like here in Ontario, it's um, for those that are not following the news. And um, Dr. Alex Patel put up this awesome post. We we should actually um, uh, sticky it on the on the forum mm-hmm. because he went through. All these questions people might have, and he was so gracious with his time to write that out for everybody. But uh, here in Ontario, one thing where um, it could tie into professional wrestling is that um, large events over a thousand people are going to have 50 percent capacity. We don't know when this when this is exactly going to be enacted, um, but it sounds like it's going to be soon. And of course, WWE has that Toronto show at the end of the month at Coca-Cola Coliseum. And I have. Uh, asked WWE, I don't even know if that would necessarily be something they are aware of yet or much less um, have any kind of answer to. But yeah, nonetheless, in Ontario, we we are seeing these restrictions come uh, pretty fast. Um, there's a lot of uh, t- today was a very busy day for the Ontario government. I believe booster shots are we're, we're going to be eligible for relatively yes. soon as of next so. week. OK, there you go. Yeah, no, I mean, going into the theater, a sold out one at that. Um, I'm definitely a bit nervous about it. So, um, you know, I, it kind of reminds me of like where we were when, when this whole thing started, where uh, before we had really shut down and a lot of us still had, you know, playing. So it's um maybe yeah, maybe get maybe get a rapid test after like they're yeah more accessible yeah. now. And that at least gives you the peace of mind. Aren't I would they, just say, like, aren't, if they're they going to be free for, at like the LCBO. I think they are offering them there. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did hear about that. Yeah. Not so. a bad idea at all. Okay. Well, um, there you go. All of the, the shows can be found at postwrestling.com, patreon.com slash postwrestling supports the site, keeps it going all year round. And we have uh, lots to come, including our Christmas show that will drop Christmas Eve. So get in your jingle submissions. Uh, the deadline is December 21st, 10 a.m. You can go to forum.postwrestling.com. It is right there at the top of the forum. You can submit your jingle there. We will go through all of them on the Christmas show and select a winner. Tonight's winner was Winter is Coming from the Curtis Caldwell Center. And did you notice that uh, Cody going through the flaming table has been inserted into the opening of Dynamite? So now it has been immortalized. Uh, I, I didn't pay attention in particular, but okay. De- deserves deserves it, I guess. You're going to have all yeah, those burns. Sure. You, you might as well get into the opening, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it, it'll probably be covered on the reality show. You know, oh, that's I, I, I certainly expect Cody to uh, just bring it up randomly to, uh, at the house of, hey, guys, this is what uh, I think I'm going to be doing. And all the reaction shots. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how many... Um, Human burnings uh, have occurred on, you know, reality TV. Um, but uh, 
it'll be an interesting episode to watch, I suppose, to see how they handle that. They called it a sellout off the top. Uh, Excalibur here alongside Taz and Tony Schiavone. Brian Danielson's music hits, and we are going to the championship match immediately. Uh, how how much higher was your probability of the draw once you heard this music? Hmm. I mean, I think we had expected it to be to start the show off either way mm, because of the 60 minute time limit. I think no matter what they want to at least create the idea that a draw was, would be possible, even if they didn't deliver it. And I, I didn't really see any other way of doing it when you already had three other matches promoted for this show other than to put it up front. So didn't really change my my perspective, but certainly, you know, allowed it to to be a possibility. Yeah. So they're both out. This crowd is super heated. AEW chance. The match begins. They're going back and forth between both men. And Brian Danielson was at his cockiest in this match. The jumping jacks, I think, could be a regular trademark for Danielson uh, com- coming out of this match. He's trying to frustrate Paige, even offering his hand at one point, And the crowd has uh, none of it. So there, there are a lot of like heels who like to play cocky. But like it works really well for Brian because he is actually that good. You know, it works especially well when you know the wrestler is good and you kind of hate them for it. Uh, you kind of hate it because you can't really, you know, call bullshit. Um, and Brian Danielson is one of those guys who is absolutely able to to back it up. So like, you know, playing the, the cocky persona absolutely works for him as a heel. The first target of Danielson was the left knee. And he he used a Indian death lock, then goes to body shots that are getting tons of heat. They go 15 minutes before we get our first of many picture in picture breaks uh, during the duration of the match. And when we come back, Paige lands a fall away slam. And dude, this crowd just so loved Hangman Page. Like he could sell for several minutes uninterrupted. And then when he blasted back with a lariat or any bit of offense, this crowd just was so behind him. This was a person they loved and a person they hated for 60 minutes. And the crowd pretty much was into it from start to finish. I think they actually loved Brian as well. But I mean, they they know the part that they were supposed supposed to be playing. And Brian was a very effective heel. So, um, you know, at one point there were there were like, you know, as the commentators mentioned, 40, 60 or <laughs> according to Taz, 59, 39 um, <laughs> split um, between the Let's Go Brian and Cowboy shit chance. It, it was definitely a crowd that was appreciative of the both of them, but they were also, you know, uh, willing to play the part that they were supposed to. I think like off the top, you certainly had the, the 59, 39, but <laughs> once the match got going, it was it was definitely more, I, I think, one sided with Paige because, dude, Danielson was in control of this for like 80 percent of the match was him just beating on Paige and it and it worked very effectively. Uh, we saw around the 20 minute mark Paige. Page's moonsault off the top to the floor, bringing in Danielson for a DVD, which was the first big cover attempt by Page. Then he misses a moonsault and is caught with a mahi straw cradle. LaBelle Lock gets stopped with Page holding the fingers to counter it. And then the drop kicks in the corner by Danielson. He hits two of them. The third gets stopped with a pop up into a sit out power bomb. Crowd goes nuts for this two count. And Page sets up for the buckshot lariat. And Danielson rolls out. And Paige decides, I'm going to go for another moonsault to the floor. But he gets shoved off and flips over with his back, actually his shoulder to be specific, lands on the edge of the apron with Danielson ramming it into the post multiple times. And this was a huge part of the match, the weakening of the shoulder to tell the story with the the label lock later on as well. So this was going to pay dividends. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we... (laughs) After the shoulder spots, Danielson just goes into the ring and he's posing. The crowd is booing and we get our second picture in picture. This is around 28 minutes in and Paige is busted open. So the whole break, Paige is on the floor. Uh, Dr. Sampson is checking on him and Danielson. I was glad the TSN did not uh, deprive us of this picture in picture because we got Danielson giving the middle finger to the crowd. He was... Uh, cupping the ear, then doing the jumping jacks. He was just doing everything in his heel arsenal during this commercial break where there was no interaction between the two. It was Paige selling and getting checked on and Danielson working the crowd. I thought this was great. He was button mashing all the taunt controls available to him on the joystick. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a chance for them to rest, of course, as well. But I think as a 
a picture in picture segment, I mean, you're providing a compelling visual and a little tiny picture for audiences to come back to. Is that a category for the year end? Best, Best picture in picture? picture? Yeah. Um, if, if somebody dares to go back and revisit every single it, one. It, it'll be that one you hated where we got the pinfall during the picture in picture. Oh God. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so they come back. Danielson targets the cut with a flying knee off the apron. And at one point he's putting Paige's face into the turnbuckle and they zoom in on mm. this blood, just like gushing out of Paige. Um, just awful masochist shooting this show. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it, we, we somehow love seeing blood. They love, they love their blood yeah. and they love the act of it, like squirting out. Uh, oh. cattle mutilation is almost applied, but Paige is not down on his stomach and he gets to the rope. Uh, Danielson then misses kicking the post with his shin. And this would allow Paige to capitalize with a figure four, we go to another picture in picture. This was the one that Canada did not follow suit with. So we we missed out on these three minutes. Page and slams out of a triangle, but then Danielson gets it in tighter, elbowing Page in the wound uh, before getting to the rope. And Page hits a tombstone. Crowd goes nuts for this near fall. We're starting to get um, to the 10 minute mark. Uh, Danielson has a gotch pile driver on the edge that's countered with a dead eye and he uses the full 10 count to recover. Page is not going to wait for the 10. So he leaps off the top and this dude kills himself going through the timekeepers table. And thus we go to another picture in picture. Wh- wh- how did you find the commercial breaks? Were they were were they um they did hampering not, the match for you not at all you know and, and this is a good time to re- kind of remind ourselves that there's a real art to television professional and wrestling versus you know a straight match in on a on a pay-per-view i thought these two did wonderfully you know they led into every single break with i think you know like a, a pretty compelling cliffhanger and we see it all the time every edition of raw oh they're on the outside time to take a quick commercial break but like for this one, there was obviously a whole lot at stake, but it felt like, you know, the commercial breaks added, acted as, as like really good chapter markers, you know, for, for a, this huge narrative that they they were trying to weave. And, you know, they were big spots leading up to it, too, and especially this this uh, dive through the table. Yeah. So we come back and during the break, there's a DDT by Danielson onto the exposed floor and we've got 10 minutes to go. There's kicks by Danielson. Page fires off lariats, but they're not as effective because of the injured shoulder. Um, commentary was terrific throughout this and thought, pay, paying Taz so much great. attention to this. Taz has is really stepped up. Um, I should just say he's getting more of a spotlight now that he's kind of a fix a fixture. I, I think for a long, long time now, he, he's been the best color commentator on the show. Um uh, we know the circumstances about why he's on dynamite, but I mean, I, in either case, like, I think for a long time now, he's proven that he is the best, especially for a situation like this where, um, I mean, for the promotion like this, you know, that, that really treats its, its product as sport. He gives the most sport like call for sure. So, uh, page fires off these lariats, the shoulder is hurt and page gets, the attempt is for a belly to back suplex by Danielson off the top turnbuckle. Page manages to land on his feet and hit the lariat. And this crowd, dude, roars. It is just this gust of cheers for, for Page. Danielson uh, regains control and he grabs the wrist to start stomping down. We're down to four minutes left in the 60 minute time limit. Goes for the Busaiku knee and it is caught with a dead eye for a two count. Now Paige takes the wrist and starts stomping Danielson as the crowd is chanting yes. He goes for the buckshot lariat but is caught in the LaBelle lock. He's got the injured shoulder. We've got a minute left. And Page fights and fights. Danielson cannot get the full grip. And Page escapes, slingshots Danielson to the ropes, skins the cat, but Page nails him with one more lariat, gets to the outside. You're looking, I'm looking at the stopwatch. Are they going to stick the landing? Page nails the buckshot lariat with seconds to go. Danielson is down. Page is trying to get to him. 60 minute mark is hit. And this place, first they were just so upset that the time limit was hit, but then they all were just somewhat in awe. And the announcers, I mean, 
dude, they were immediate. I can't wait for the rematch. I can't wait for the rematch. Uh, this was amazing. It really was. Yeah. Anytime you get to see a performance that spans 60 minutes in professional wrestling, I, I think it's a, it's a very special feat. No matter what the booking ends up being, you know, um, simply seeing somebody out there engaged in some form of professional wrestling. I mean, we go crazy for like even 60 minute appearances in something like a, a Royal Rumble. This was just two people having a professional wrestling match. And it, it, I just it's it, that in itself is very special. And, and it's not something you you can work you know, you have to legitimately be in outstanding physical condition and you have to have incredible aptitude for for putting together a wrestling match in order to, to be out there for 60 minutes and to make it compelling. And these two absolutely did that. And and for that alone, I think, you know, anybody who watched this live or on TV felt like they got something very worthwhile and incredibly special. Um, they could have, of course, you know, promoted something like this. Hey, like Iron Man match. But I mean, we all know the criticism of Iron Man matches for TV. You know, they like they they tend to you know tell people when to tune in and when not to tune in. I like this a whole lot better. You leave the time limit open; it could end at any second. They just happen to go sixty minutes. Um, considering the length, I thought it was incredibly well paced and well laid out. Because I mean, I've got you know we've gone through this year criticizing a lot of wrestling matches that have gone a lot longer than they needed to simply to fill time. Um, simply because, you know, they, they have limitations about how many matches they can put on the show. So let's make all of them 30 minutes. This was 60 minutes and I never got bored once. And I'm trying to think about the reasons why that is. And for me, it's because it was a fresh matchup. First of all, it was a matchup with a lot of stakes attached to it that was heavily promoted on a big event. And, uh, you know, like it was a finish that wasn't necessarily done for, uh, like uh for kind of bullshit reasons like we don't have enough <laughs> content time it wasn't done just for ratings although i'm sure it helped the quarter hours hours will be really interesting to study but it, this was uh, to me mainly done for storytelling and mainly done you know to to, to successfully build to a compelling rematch so it, it, uh, all of that i i thought it felt like you know they presented something incredibly special yeah i mean I, I thought the recent uh, Nakajima uh, Kano 60 minute uh, match was just, uh, I just thought that was a spectacular match. This one was, I, I mean, just watching it, um, I, I thought it was really impressive given that they had the handicap of the commercial breaks. I think that really does play a big factor. And there, and it happens a lot when we see longer matches on WWE that I think the breaks, and granted, they don't really utilize picture in picture. Uh, it takes so much of the momentum out of the match. And then when we see maybe the same match verbatim on, on a WWE pay-per-view, it's received so much better when you just don't have that commercial interruption. So um, the fact they had that to uh, overcome as well, and you had such a tremendous crowd for this that, I mean, from the second this match started, it was um, a rabid audience, and I thought they pretty much kept them throughout. And that's that's saying a lot for an audience that you're almost like tipping your hand that we're starting this show. This might not go 60. It's at least going to flirt with 60. And that's why I I am not the biggest fan of the Iron Man concept with this. It was even if you thought that they were going to go that long, it's like that that doubt of will they do a finish with minutes to go? Mm -hmm. And all it is is. Creating that doubt in wrestling is to me like that's the sweet spot of when you can play with people where it's something they want and maybe you're going to get the 60 minute time limit. It makes a whole lot of sense to do it, but maybe they won't. Maybe they will give you that finish and you just have to create a bit of doubt. And I think they kept a reasonable amount of that and it made for such a dramatic end, which when time limits are done properly, it's so dramatic at the end. So. You know, if we remember the uh, the what is it the the Brian Omega match that also went to a draw, I I believe like a point of criticism of that match was uh, that they didn't announce when the time limit would be or that like they didn't do the kind of New Japan thing where they would count down to the finish and therefore like correct me if I'm wrong I think it was that match where we 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 were all kind of you know talk, discussing it, that it was point. as I recall it was announced but no one could hear it right or at least like it wasn't done dramatically. They didn't do that here at all. I mean, other than the announcers mentioning, uh, what, uh, I guess, uh, what is it? Uh, Justin Roberts said like Justin five, Roberts five did. 
He gave the one minute mark. There was an announcement okay. of one so, minute left. So, I, I mean, I don't believe they really changed anything about the way that they did it, other than the fact that maybe more people heard it this time for some reason. Uh, it, you know, again, I, I don't completely recall, but I absolutely had like I enjoyed the way that they did it here. You know, like in New Japan, they would like do what? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. And I, I don't think that was necessary. And I lo- kind of like the fact that it, you know, the 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 end of the time limit came out of nowhere here because it made you think that, oh, okay, they're going to have Paige, like, pin him. Or at least made me think they're going to have Paige pin him, like, with seconds to go. Um, and in, instead, they didn't, and it came as a surprise. I thought the booking was very satisfying. You know, I going into, even, like, talking about this match this afternoon, I I doubted whether or not they would do the draw because I think it was important for Paige to get a first championship like a first successful title defense for his first defense but i thought the way they booked it was very satisfying despite that because despite not winning he he gave a legendary performance already for 60 minutes on television um so that already in in itself i think it, it, it it does more than just any of your typical championship wins but secondly he was essentially given a visionary win at the end you know like mm-hmm. the, the idea the story is if this match was 5 seconds longer he would have won this match and th- that to me was a brilliant way of you know having having page feel like the victor without actually giving you the the actual finish yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I saw some comparisons pe- people made of this to like the the Flair Sting match, the the forty five minute uh, draw at the first Clash of Champions, which is was at the Greensboro Coliseum where they're going to be uh, next week. I- in some ways, like I did look at it, like certainly Page is, I would say, much further ahead. I mean, he's your your world champion in AEW, but this was kind of just that that latest like cementing of Hangman Page in a main event role that. I think everyone would look at, you know, Brian Danielson doing 60 minutes. Uh, it was Paige hanging with him for the whole time, pardon the pun, and being being his equal in this match and getting that that visual at the end that he had Danielson beat. I just thought this did so much in, in many different directions, not the least of which is the rematch. Absolutely. That's a it's a wonderful question. Uh, but before that, you know, um, somebody in the chat room is bringing up. Uh, you mentioned Ric Flair. Ric Flair actually tweeted out. I've done so many hour draws, some great, some average. Tonight, you gentlemen set a new bar. The wrestling world can learn from at the Adam Page and at Brian Danielson. Congratulations. Woo. So there you go. So a tweet in um, sentence casing, title title casing That's uh, the, uh... from Ric Flair as usual. <laughs> uh, but yeah, rematch. W- where do you think it happens and what sort of match do you think it will be? Well, it's tough, right? Like it's like the only like you have to have your championship at Battle of the Belts. And I guess we still don't know what the format of that show is going to be. Um, but it's it's got to be um, no time limit, right? God, like, I mean, should, is that the game that we should be playing? Like, you know, because you, when you say no time limit, it's like we are you're essentially kind of promising a 60 plus minute match. And you don't have to deliver that, of course, but I, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't do 60. Yeah, no time. Like I'm for me, I I would personally be a, a lot a bit more interested if it was like um, I, you know, something with with like uh, a style variation attached to it, like whether it be a steel cage or, um, you know, a ladder wouldn't really make sense in this situation, but like something that that would um, tell me that the style of match that I would be watching would be different from the sixty minutes that I saw here. But in terms of story, yeah, maybe, maybe no time limit makes sense. Um, and but where would you do that other than pay per view? I, I think ba- the Battle of the Belts. That's not a pay per view. Oh, sorry. Like I, that. That's where I would do it. Yeah. I, I. I don't think you can hold off on this till March. Is but that I what mean, you're but but I mean, if they do a no time limit stipulation. Yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult. If it's, it's if they have that that one hour broadcast time, like they, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you're you're doing it with the idea of teasing the sixty and you, and you have page win in that time frame. Hmm. Yeah, it will be interesting, uh, and I'm sure like at this point they already have their idea in mind and and are just perhaps waiting to reveal it. But I also wouldn't mind if they cooled off on this and had page, you know, had somebody else challenge page in the meantime. I mean, it's it's much like you know what we we've got with Brian versus Kenny, where um you can kind of cool off on that feud for a bit. Yeah, it's it's tough with the babyface to not 
give the guy the rematch right away. You know what I mean? Mm. It's it's one thing if it would have been like Omega that, hey, you have to go to the back of the line uh, after the draw. But certainly you get to the rematch, and I think that's the only question of, of where you do it. But um, I just don't know if you could – what other challenger could you create in a – like January 8th is not that far away for the Battle of the Belt show. It's true, yeah. Uh, or maybe Paige doesn't defend on that show. How can you battle the belts without your main champion? I mean, it's only it's still only scheduled to be an hour, right? They have not they have not stated what the length is. Okay. So But I mean, you can headline with a Britt Baker defense, you know, you can have your tag titles, you can have your TNT title. So we'll see. Uh let us know, uh, you know, audience, so what kind of stipulation would you guys like to see? Would you like to see another straight up match, you know, between these these two? How many hours should they go the next time? A 2-hour match. What? Why not three? Just Best keep... of three hours. Yes. Yeah. Have it continue. At the into, end, into we, we we have judges that will grade each hour. Who won each hour? Uh, yeah. So I, sure. After after this, if it was this quality, sign me right up. We go to the back. The young bucks are with uh, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish in a uh, a Christmas uh, Christmas decor here backstage. And they address the best friends and how they've embarrassed them. They showed the attack on Trent and they suggest an eight man tag on Rampage. And Matt says that they should super kick Sue and end her career. How terrible. Talking about super kicking somebody's mom. Sue should be doing the super kick. She, she, she said she, she should be. <laughs> <laughs> Then Adam Cole says that next week on the Christmas edition of Dynamite, he is going to have the best present you could ever ask for. What will that be? And it's going to be a surprise next week. A surprise Christmas present. Gee, I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, um, I believe Kyle O'Reilly playing with this on Twitter as well. Uh, let me see. Here. What did Kyle O'Reilly say? Well, we had uh, Matt Jackson end this with a uh, Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Uh, okay, there you go. Yeah, Kyle O'Reilly tweeting a, a, a gif of, um, I believe this is Brad Pitt from Seven asking what's in the box. So, uh, very interesting. Hmm. Wardlow versus Matt Seidel followed that. This is probably the, this was probably the best option of what to follow a 60 minute match with. Uh, Seidel is attacking with kicks, but then gets caught, slammed down, powerbomb. Sean Spears says, you're done, pin him. But Wardlow listens to the crowd, delivers another powerbomb, pinning Seidel in a minute 29. Spears gets in with chair shots and then gets a phone call, and it's MJF that wants Wardlow to buy champagne for their victory tonight. So the idea that uh, he was not watching this match, nor does he care about Wardlow's match. He is the gopher at the end of the day. I do like the idea of like, you know, having a very simple squash match as a follow up to something that was so dramatic. Um, I'll always like to me, I'll always remember like the follow up to like Brett versus Austin at WrestleMania 13 as like just this plunder match. I think it was like between the nation. I got I got to look this up. With, um, uh, the Legion of Doom and Ahmed. Yeah. And I just remember that match being incredibly satisfying as like a come down because it was just like men, you know, hitting each other with like stupid objects and it's not something you have to really think about too much it was just like you know visual destruction which i think you know follows up like these very emotional battles really well um so i thought it was a good choice here i mean um yeah they're just continuing you know what really looks like a like a ramp ramping up of a baby face push for wardlow here yep yep just continuing that that along uh we had the malachi black video um he was turning over cards. There's a voiceover about embracing the violence. Not everyone will grasp his teachings. And there's a man in a hood that Malachi Black walks up to, spits the black mist into, and then puts a chain around his neck uh, like some some disciple of his. Yeah, did he not have a line about, like, king or something? Like, And, and this was a man who clearly had uh, some tattoos on his hand. Um, did he not say that, John? Uh, I think, yeah. So I think the, the idea at the end of this was, is this, is this the introduction of Brody King? Seems like it. Yeah. So, so is this how he baptizes his, um, new disciples now by like doing the mist in their eyes? Maybe that, maybe this is where Julia Hart ends up. I mean, it's gotta be right. That's gotta be what's, what's going on. So what is this? The house of black now with Brody King and Julia Hart? 
Uh, uh, that's well, that's kind of where it feels like it's leading to. Yeah, a combination. Is poor Julia Hart going to like show up with like a bunch of neck tattoos and uh, hand tattoos? Dark black hair. Yeah, getting a makeover um, as we speak. I I bet. Hey, if we, maybe this is going to be uh, the. Maybe this will somehow tie into the the Owen Hart Cup. We will have the uh, the King of Heart with Brody King, Julia Hart, and the Black Heart with okay. Black. Yeah, interesting. Oh, okay, sure. I don't think that will have anything <laughs> to do with the Owen Hart Cup. <laughs> Serena Deeb against Hikaru Shida. Um, so Deeb was destroying her leg and knee. Uh, Throughout the first half of this match, um, she also took off the covering on the turnbuckle to deliver a neck breaker. And she's d- delivering knees, goes to a Muda lock, forcing the rope break, and then a pair of swinging neck breakers. Sheeta fires back with a falcon arrow. And Justin Roberts notes when they hit the 10 minute mark. So they were teasing the time limit way. Will they go to a draw? Will we get a 20 minute draw? We would not. Uh, multiple counters ending with Deeb applying a single leg, slap Sheeta, and then she removes the turnbuckle pad. They battle, and then as Deeb goes for a figure four, she's kicked into the buckle, jackknife cover, and pins Sheeta in 12 minutes and 24 seconds. You know, I thought this was a really good match, but this was also at the point in the show where I, I mean, because the crowd was at such a high early on in the show, where I definitely felt like there was a, a bit of a valley here. And I, I, there were portions of the match where I don't know if the crowd necessarily had the energy to live up to what I think a grudge rubber match was supposed to elicit from them. But um, I thought the quality of the match was really good. And if this was a match that started off the show, if it was a match that took place on a rampage or any other night, I think it would have received a, a much bigger reaction. I like to think of like you know matches like this as like they're really great salads. But, you know, you you get presented a great salad after a filet mignon. It's not going to feel as exciting. Yeah, I thought technically it was a very good match, but I think this one probably fell short of the other two that that they had. This was kind of a, a dip for the crowd. It was also uh, I, th- I thought it was like a, I think maybe maybe she needed a little bit more in this. Like there was just a lot of, of selling, but it also might have just been your natural come down that you're going to have on a uniquely structured show like this one. Yeah, sorry. What, what was the what what finish did you uh, mention, John? It was uh, Deeb got sent into the exposed buckle, and then Sheeta pinned her with a jackknife cover. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Shivani is with the Varsity Blondes minus Julia Hart, and Griff Garrison calls Malachi Black a coward, and I'm going to bring the fight to you. And Pillman's like, "Dude, that's a stupid idea. What's wrong with you?" And Griff gets upset and promises to break. Malachi Black's jaw next week. I don't think he's going to break his jaw. I think this is going to be a bad week for young Griff Garrison in Greensboro. Well, I I love the amb- uh, ambition and I, I I love the fire from Griff Garrison here. Really this was like his off. most fired up we've ever heard Griff Garrison. Yeah. So, we'll see. good luck. Then I I love the fact that there was so much going on on the show, but they realized it was enough of an important part to put a recap of hooks debut on this show. I love that too. I mean, again, it tells you how much they think of it. They completely recognize the success online, even if it didn't necessarily translate to rating success right off the bat. Merch, merch seller, merchandise success. Yeah, absolutely. And social media success, you know, it's trending, you know, all this, all this type of stuff. So just kind of really hammering it home for people who didn't watch rampage. And of course set to the action Bronson track as well. Eddie Kingston cut a promo. Uh, We're going to get a 10-man tag on Rampage where Kingston will team with Santana, Ortiz, and the Lucha Brothers against Daniel Garcia 2.0 and two partners that they will have. And he said he's especially looking to take out Daniel Garcia. And that's on Friday. MJF comes out for the main event and just insults Texas, calls it a dump, says, hey, Texas, your daughter swallows. Just to the entire state. Even if you don't have a daughter. Wow. The whole state. He call, He says they are anti-education and pro-incest. And then <laughs> addresses CM Punk. And dude, this place goes insane. Chanting for Punk. MJF says how Punk accused him 
of resorting to low hanging fruit when last week Punk got nervous and he went after the cliche sports team talking about the Islanders for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, again, I, I don't know how many other targets there are to go after for a Long Island. Um, <laughs> the, the Islanders were, were a big target last week. Yeah. Well, the sports teams remained, uh, they, they were unscathed here in Texas. He says that Punk's streak that he has accumulated is against underwhelming opponents in underwhelming fashion. I don't think that makes you championship material. I think it makes you the new Ryback. <laughs> really continuing the this this trend in this feud of, of using old WWE names as insults. And and people that you are aware of that that punk had uh you know animosity towards. Okay. Uh yeah, sure. I, I didn't even draw the punk connection. I mean I, I guess this was one of his like big things in the in the cabana podcast was you know, right. work, working with Ryback. But I would also say more importantly, like these are names that like, you know, the the AEW audience generally wouldn't think of uh in very highly, you know, in as professional wrestlers. It is a you know, Ryback, it doesn't sound like it's from that far away, but he's been off TV many years at this point. Yeah. A name that people still reacted to here. MJF says, I don't care about the younger talent. I'm the only talent that's young that matters. Says that Dante Martin has the charisma and verbal ability of Helen Keller on Quaaludes. Oh, man. Yeah, I love that at the end of it. He had to add Quaaludes on top of the insult. And he can... Sorry, never mind. I, yeah. He can beat Dante Martin with a headlock takeover. I don't claim to be the best in the world. I just am. I mean, this was great stuff, you know, like to, to nobody's surprise. I felt like this show was really, you know, after after all the great wrestling that we got to watch for like 90 minutes, I felt like it was in dire need of Good, really good in-person talking segment. And mm-hmm. this was what MJF was here to deliver. And it woke this crowd right up. Yeah. I mean, they were just heated throughout the second he walked out. Um, this crowd was just uh, on their feet for this rampage. So we got the 10 man tag with, uh, with Kingston, the eight man with the, with uh, the super click with Bobby fish against Trent Romero, Chuck Taylor and orange Cassidy. So Trent wrestling on, well, probably as we speak, and a submission match between Penelope Ford and Ty Conti, as well as the return of Dan Lambert. So uh, that's an interesting lineup for for Friday's Rampage. Seems pretty loaded, actually. Yeah, they, there was a, a little video package they showed for the uh, Conti right. submission video, or sorry, submission match earlier on too. So uh, uh, an interesting little stipulation added to a, a match that it, will showcase a different side of their their games. Yeah, Ford stating she doesn't need brass knuckles to beat Ty Conti, so she's going to prove she can beat her in a in her own game in a submission match. And the main event, MJF and Dante Martin for the Dynamite Ring. Dante uh, comes after him with drop kicks, and then goes he hits this rolling thunder, but at the end it's this four fifty splash that he hits on it, and it, it was actually like the knees, like he hit a four fifty, like landing knees first. Well, for, for, for extra impact, you, you drop the knees. He goes to the nosedive, but MJF rolls out to the ring. Uh, Dante is sent into the barricade, and as they go to break, MJF is in this fan's face, and the fan is giving him the middle fingers, and MJF is just screaming, do something, do something. It's like, dude, this guy is like going up to gasoline and sparking the match. He just wants to uh, just push it as far as possible yeah i was like man you're going to the front row of a dude here here in texas man this guy could just wallop you and i think he'd be more than happy to to have that happen you read the story about the the fan that snuck backstage oh yeah that was a that was a wild story i don't know how that happens oh god like yeah no i i mean it's getting to the point where like i i definitely worry about like you know the the fan um performer interactions getting a little bit too close so um, you know, this seemed like it was all in good fun, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, there, it sometimes it makes me feel uneasy. Like when, when, fan, when, when they get so close and so aggressive, uh, then we got the Dante Martin show. He hits this amazing, like twisting dive over the top. Just the height he gets on these are incredible. 
follows with a Topecon hero over the buckles. Then a Fosbury flop, and this crowd is going wild. They're chanting one more time, and he does this springboard shooting star to the floor. He overshoots MJF, but the announcers are quick to note his knee caught MJF. He caught him with the knee. So those knees way, those are the weapons of Dante Martin. I mean, as any good commentator is supposed to do, they're supposed to protect and, you know, say, oh, he meant to do that. He meant to cat clip him in the knees. You know, he meant this to sequence, This sequence of dives was just, it was, it was amazing. Awesome. Fantastic. It, was just- it did not, you know, and like, even if it was in a picture perfect shooting star press, like this crowd didn't give a shit. I think they were just impressed at, you know, the acrobatics and the idea of the spot itself. You know, <laughs> the it, it's it's really funny. It's like NJF deciding to evade, get get away from this guy. And he decides to, like, get out of the ring. (laughs) He gets hit with a splash, then decides to go and evade him on the other side of the ring, gets hit on that side until, you know, rinse and repeat for all four sides. It was uh, a wonderful physical display and also a really funny bit. Back in the ring, MJF gets the side headlock takeover, but Dante gets his shoulder up. They're trading covers. Dante gets his own headlock takeover. Then a sit-out powerbomb by MJF for a two-count. Goes for the nosedive, but Ricky Starks appears, putting MJF's foot on the bottom rope. And with Dante distracted by Ricky Starks, MJF is able to capitalize and put him into the salt of the earth and submits him in 12 minutes, 33 seconds to keep the ring uh, for a third consecutive year. Very good match. You know, it started off with the great promo from MJF. And then just what, you know, a fantastic display from Dante Martin. Every time you you let this kid go to, go out there and perform, he delivers. Not everything, of course, like, you know, looked perfect. But like, again, it, it doesn't, it didn't matter. Didn't affect the match at all. It certainly didn't affect Dante Martin's stock nor his reputation. If anything, this, this absolutely increased his reputation. Um, I thought it was a... Uh, very enjoyable although like you know when mjf and and dante martin entered into the near fall sequences i didn't think it was as effective this time around as it was for the darby allen match and maybe at least for me because that match in that spot was so recognized from that match i just kind of recognized it as okay they're going into the you know the they're going into this sequence like they're going into this act rather than like something that was unfolding organically. So that that just might be a personal nitpick for me. But yeah, I just thought the way it was brought up in the promo, it would have had a more prominent um, meaning in the match, the headlock takeover instead of Dante just getting the shoulder up. Like it's yeah. almost like this, this uh, you know, salt in the wound kind of move to, to use that, um, you know, had, had Ricky Starks interfered somehow and then MJF uses the side headlock takeover to get the win. Right. Something like that. Yeah, just, you know, his like that being his actual finisher, like fake mm-hmm. finisher. Right, yeah. exactly. It's like someone else does the work and he gets the credit winning with the takeover. So anyway, I, I thought it was a really fun main event. I thought I thought both looked great. Um, Dante is like, I thought this was just a spectacular outing for him in this main event. And then the Pinnacle is out to celebrate, reminding us that uh, the Pinnacle is a group here in AEW. FTR's got MJF up on their shoulders. The lights go out. Sting and Darby appear in the ring. They attack FTR. MJF eventually low blows Sting, and then they double team Darby. This whole crowd starts chanting CM Punk. Punk comes out to a gigantic pop, and he's got a bat chasing the pinnacle out of the ring, setting up a six-man tag for Greensboro next week. Um, FTR has to be in their glory. After getting to play Heels in Mexico earlier this month, now they get to go work Sting in Greensboro. Um, That crowd should be electric next week. Um, And they just came from Ring of Honor, like doing stuff with the Briscoes. Right. They've got the Briscoes program. Everywhere that like, I mean, I I don't, I don't know what your pick is for like tag team of the year yet. And and I'm sure it's, it's actually probably not as easy of a choice as, as we make it seem, but uh, FTR have, have been really like they've had a great year they're um, getting calls from edge to go check on on the house <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean they they're everywhere they're crossing every door <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, except except for edge's house they missed that one yeah yeah well they're they're busy guys <laughs> uh, that was the show i i thought this was such an excellent show i i enjoyed it uh thoroughly and that 60 minute match i think that that's like an all-time television match. Uh, among the AEW television matches, it's been an incredible catalog they've put together in two and a half years, but uh, that match is going to be on a lot of people's shortlist. 
completely agree. You know, anytime you're presented a match like this on free television, um, in a very kind of good condensed two hour setting, um, it's you, you, this, this show can't be anything but a thumbs up. And, you know, it wasn't just that, but like everything else on the show was, was very strong as well. Um, I, I thought deep and Shido was a good match. Unfortunately, they had to follow, you know, an amazing, great all time classic perhaps, um, but I thought they did their best and, you know, wrapped up their feud nicely. And then you had a really good main event, too, between uh, MJF and Dante, Dante Martin that I thought really elevated both men. One other thing, I, I like when shows, you know, play with their format. And it's like, why can't we do this? And, mm-hmm. you know, I remember remember several years ago when they did the um, they did the gauntlet match on Raw and they had Seth Rollins go like over an hour. It's just like totally throwing your regular viewing pattern out the window and almost like your audience is just watching something that they're just not, their brain is not used to watching a show that way. And I just think the idea of doing a 60 minute match on TV. Yeah. It sounds ambitious. You have to work around commercials, but you can, you can pull off many different ways of presenting a two hour wrestling show. So when you deviate from the norm, I think it can, it can do wonders. Totally agree. Yeah. Um, I'm very curious to see what the quarter rating breakdown will be this week. And, you know, it, it's interesting because, like, I think Raw had very much the same idea of wanting to put, you know, a big name star like a Bobby Lashley on throughout the course of its uh, three hours. But their method was to have three separate matches. I mean, AEW's was to have one whole match last four different segments. Um, I'm curious to see how, you know, if patterns are different this year, you would expect, you know, because of the match. But um, if they do, how much and how how well did they retain, you know, going into and, the second and, and is the idea of starting it, if that's enough of a tip off to people, do, does do people, do, does that scare some people off? Um, my assumption would be no, but you, so. you, you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Hey, uh, one last thing. You know, uh, Shivani kept like teasing that Tony Khan was going to have a big announcement about the holiday bash. Um, as far as I know, the, the only six thing man. That was the big announcement. S- Sting wrestling at the Greensboro Coliseum. That's, I think that that's not that big of a like they made it seem like it was like a game changing announcement. It's a, I mean, it's it's a sure okay Sting, but like we just saw Sting. Well, I think they're going to build this up as like Sting's return to a very famous building. Like that that's where he had the match with Flair. It's, you know, I uh, I uh, yeah, like that that was the match. Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you 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 tease a big announcement from Tony Khan, I feel like you're getting people's hopes up, you know, a lot higher than maybe just the announcement of a trios match. But all right. Let's go to feedback and see what everyone had to say about winter is coming. Andrew starts off the feedback. A lot of people expected the time limit draw, but it needed to happen. Similar to how one of AEW's first matches was a time limit draw between Cody Rhodes and Darby Allin. Now every world title match going forward has the potential to reach the 60 minute time limit, which can make for some great drama, even in matches that aren't going to go 60. After that, it was excellent wrestling and establishing more programs in the future. It built up Wardlow, the potential debut of Brody King, and lots of stuff for next week. The only negative was I thought they were going to announce something for the Owen Hart tournament. I'm wondering if they have it similar to the G1 or maybe a Young Lions Cup. Great show tonight. Shout out to Punk and his t-shirt. What was the shirt? I didn't didn't catch it. Okay. um, Bruce. Says, not sure I, that I can add much to what you guys will no doubt have to say, but that was one hell of a wrestling show. Danielson has given AEW two of the company's best matches in its short history. I mean, even after that epic match, no one really felt like an afterthought, with the exception of Matt Seidel. Brody King should be a nice addition and will give Black some latitude both in ring and in his character work. Also, good on Punk for visibly supporting reproductive rights in Texas at this moment in time. Okay, so maybe that was the shirt. Oh, okay, so it's... uh um. In, in support there. So, Got it. Okay. Cool. Uh, Johnny writes, what a match. I know many people don't like the draw aspect. To be fair, no one likes draws in general, but I loved it. Makes you want Brian versus Page 2. Also great on both of them being able to keep the audience engaged for the entire 60 minutes. Wish that, wish the US could get an AEW Plus like subscription because I want to see matches uninterrupted by commercials. Strong second hour. Dante Martin continuing to break out. You're so much more than a king. Thought last week Malachi attacking the blondes was setting up Brody, and this promo must be it. Overall, strong show tonight. Do you think that will ever happen? Like, given you know, like the like them probably not wanting to affect the TNT relationship. I 
if I was the broadcast partner, you remember um, this was something that WWE experimented with around 2005. They had this this uh, concept called WWE Unlimited, where they would keep the cameras rolling during commercial breaks that you could watch on WWE.com. And they nixed that pretty early on because the USA Network, it's like you do not want your 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 television partner sending people to the website to not watch your commercial inventory. So I just don't think something like that would be um, a great idea because it's, it's sending people away from what TNT wants people to be watching. And that's the commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Hard for me to see it. Um, you know, given how, how I, I think strong of a relationship and how much Tony Khan seems to care about, like ultimately it's about the, ad, the, the broadcaster, right? They're like literally if you, alive. if you were a U.S. viewer, like here in Canada, we missed out on one break. So it's like, we saw 57 minutes. Like you saw the full 60, you didn't get commentary and audio for all 60, but I mean, that's the best you're going to get. I, mm. I wouldn't have too much of a quibble over that. We get a Chris from Melbourne who says, so currently with daylight savings, Dynamite's, Dynamite kicks off in Melbourne at 12 noon. I'd promised Dasha, you remember 10 Sleep Still Wrestle Kingdom. Yes, we, yes, hello. Yes, Chris and Dasha, of course. That we would walk dogs over lunch, but I didn't anticipate the World Championship match opening the show. I first promised her we'll leave at a quarter past 12. Then at 12.30, then whenever this match ends. L- listen, a lot of optimism <laughs> on Chris that they'd be done by 12.15. Yeah, this is not going to be a 50 minute match. <laughs> Meanwhile, both dogs are standing there with their he- leads on, ready to go, wondering why I'm making them wait. I had to call it and just accept that I'd catch the ending later and hope to not get it spoiled. One dog walk later, I walk in and find the match is still going. Instant classic. I still need to go back and fill in the second half gap that I missed. But man, really cool way to continue the can't miss tradition of winter is coming. I think Chris needs the can't miss tradition of a DVR. It's a it's a wonderful device. I I think we, I think Chris needs to in, invest in one. But hey, uh, the the dogs have to take priority. Sure, yeah. Eventually, we'll all have like you know VR goggles. Robots will walk the dogs, and this won't be an issue. Yeah, I mean, my Google lenses will. I can watch the match as I'm walking the dogs. Yeah, and well, God, we'll God help me if we walk into traffic. <laughs> Well, dogs that don't won't need walking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of like a Milano collection. Uh, Muggen <laughs> writes, Hangman and Danielson made every minute of their match count. While it was a little deflating to not get a clear resolution, they told a story that was full of psychology, drama, and attrition. Brian's ability to work a crowd is unrivaled, and Hangman put on one hell of a performance. Battle of the Belts needs to be the place for the rematch. Sheed and Deeb capped off their trilogy with a solid match. With ROH shutting its doors, I can bet that Brody King will join the House of Black soon enough. MJF and Dante was a good main event, and Long Island was an anomaly. I almost expected the Briscoes to show up after what happened at Final Battle. First hour of winter is coming eclipses the second hour by a wide margin well yeah Yeah, i mean it's kind of you know not unfair um but i i still thought the second hour was like really fun hour of television Mm -hmm. to to follow it up i didn't think it was like the you know this show fell off a cliff by any stretch no no i agree we got a nora from vaughn who says i love the title match it was hangman's best match of his career and showed as well why Brian is one of the greatest of all time. Would you agree with that, John? I mean, it's it's very recent, but Hangman best match of Hangman's career. It's um, I, I think there's a there's strong argument. Are we for talking that. singles or tag? Like everything. Yeah, yeah. Like you're gonna put this with like the tag at Revolution, um, with Omega and the Bucks. I I, um, I like the tag more, but if we're talking singles. Singles Maybe. matches, I, I think you'd certainly probably this this would at, at worst be on a on a short list, and I, I could certainly see this being being the best match the singles match of his career. The fact that they wrestled for sixty minutes and the fans still chanted five more minutes shows just how incredible it was. Looking forward to the rematch. Kate writes a very solid show all around, but ultimately it's going to be remembered for the one match, which is as it should be. Although he didn't defeat Danielson, I don't believe Hangman looks weak after going 60 minutes, which I'm guessing is the longest of his career by some distance. I'm more than happy to see them do another round, but I'm also wondering if someone will try to push ahead of Danielson in line. With the rankings resetting at the end of the year, there is an opening for others to make their case, at least the case that they should be able to fight Danielson for the number one contender spot. So how does that work? They've reset. 
I know they reset the numbers, but like, don't they still have overall rankings? And like, does the top 10 or top five or whatever, does that reset? I mean, I know the records reset and I don't know. Like, I imagine that first week, like there's a brand new top 10. Oh, what's anybody's incentive to like, you know, try like for these last few weeks? Well, it's, it's more so it's like it's like a season. And at the end of it, it's like we all start at the same starting block again. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, okay. like, like if you if you were like if I was debuting and you're like a hundred and five. But, but but I think that 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 is that would be effective if you had like a big Super Bowl at the end of it all. Um, and, and, you know, like the big game that we're all kind of competing towards. We're building towards pay-per-views that are occurring in the, in the first week or second week of, of January and then maybe even, you know, February or March. So is none of this going to take into account until then? Until I mean, it's it, I mean, it's something where it's it's not so much like the time of the year, but I mean, they, they do rely on their rankings. Like I won't say uh, every every single big match that they make, but it, it there is often like a reliance on the rankings. So like you're rewarded throughout the year for, for being in that, in that top, that top five. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, it, it's a very ambitious thing that I, I'm kind of amazed that they've still kept up after like two, two and a half, three years now. So, um, and it's also just, you know, just a device, a storytelling device at the end that probably doesn't deserve to be, you know, scrutinized that much. And she ends it by saying, I'm amazed that Adam Cole was able to fit Kyle O'Reilly in such a small box. <laughs> you should have seen if they tried to keep uh, keep him in NXT. I mean, he would have been in a, in a box too, probably. Uh, I hope it has air holes if he's not letting the Bucks open it until next week. At this point, it feels like Kyle and Brody King shouldn't even count as surprises when they're announced, but I definitely think they'll fit in. Uh, we'll see. We will see. Yes, we will. Yeah. One more. Oh, there is? I think so. Uh, Jay? Oh, Jay okay. From- yeah, this just came in. Jay from Colorado says, Another fantastic episode of Dynamite from top to bottom. As usual, they've set up the next week of programming, and there's a lot to look forward to. The 60-minute match to start the show was a pleasant surprise, and even though we knew where it was going, it didn't take away from the excitement of the match. Do you think the Malachi Black video was meant to introduce somebody new into the House of Black? And if so, who do you think that mass figure could be? I think everyone's pointing in the same direction. I mean, you're certainly led to believe it's it's Brody King. It makes the most sense, and I don't think we have to do some like swerve. Who else it's... has a lot of tattoos? Who else could it be? Um, um maybe uh, Charles Wright, the Godfather. Oh, okay, Godfather joining the House of Black. Maybe it's a yeah. uh, uh, Gunner. What's his name? Oh. Um, Jackson Riker. Jackson Riker. I don't think it's going to be him. Hmm. Maybe it's like the Undertaker. Um. Yeah. Yeah. To come join the House of Black. Okay. So Brody King is probably the leading candidate. Um. So there you go. Thanks everyone for the the feedback, thoughts on the show tonight, and it's gonna wrap it up. A pretty strong episode of Dynamite. And we are going to be back on Thursday, live 1 p.m. Eastern Time. YouTube.com/slash Post Wrestling. Subscribe to the channel. What's holding you back? Yeah, are you scared? What are you don't weak? Be a, don't don't be a coward. Yeah. Uh, subscribe to the channel, like the channel, do whatever you have to do with with the channel. Just uh, follow it. Weekdays leave, at leave one a Eastern. Comment, interact in the chat room. I love YouTube comments. I love answering YouTube comments. I love reading YouTube comments. I love thinking about YouTube comments all the time. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> leave <laughs> leave a message do do leave them all all for way he reads every last one of them and then he tells me the best ones uh and then tomorrow as well the wellness policy live at three eastern for patrons uh jordan goodman waiting wrapping up the year and then mcu later on thursday night with wh park the man that was here here live in the post office this past saturday night oh you guys took advantage because who knows how many um meetups we'll have it could be a while at this point, but hey, we got we got one visit in from this past weekend. Check out all of that, and then Way and I will be here for Rewind to SmackDown on Friday night to go through SmackDown and Rampage. So thanks to everybody for joining us live. Have a great night, a wonderful morning, and a better tomorrow.